So next up, uh, we have Arif coming on out to talk to us about when AI meets NFTs. So please make some noise for Arif, folks. Good morning, everyone. It's a pleasure to be here with all of you. Um, I wanted to start with this image, which is uh, the Library of Alexandria. And this painting depicts um, the burning of the library. Right? And uh, this was a long time ago, of course, but in modern day, or our modern day equivalent would be perhaps the Bitcoin network going down, or the Ethereum network completely evaporating from uh, time and space. This was Wikipedia before Wikipedia. This was the sum total of all human knowledge that we had gathered and stored. And this painting depicts a time, I think, when Julius Caesar was at war with Pompey, his opponent, and somehow the library was burnt and then subsequently decayed. I want to do three things in my speech today, and I want all of you to remember this image because it will become important as we go through it. First, I want to talk to you about our history of violence as a culture. I want to talk to you about what we can do about it, and I want to finally conclude with how artificial intelligence and NFTs may present a small dent to this problem. It won't be a panacea, but it will at least move us in the right direction. As I was looking at my provenance and deciding who I am, the reason I'm able to speak English with all of you is because the East India Company was able to colonize an entire continent, continents, and was able to yield the local populations of these continents through technological power, but also uh, significant trade routes and uh, abilities that they had acquired over time. This is an image of the British Empire in Kenya, and it's because of the British that I can speak English today. So as I was inquiring about my own provenance, the language that I have, the ability for me to communicate with you, the result of hundred, hundreds of years of conquest has resulted in me being able to speak this language with you. So I know in the crypto community we are meme experts, but there was no one as powerful as a meme expert as the uh, East India Company because they acquired so much memetic power that even till today, once that empire has faded and I'm no longer a subject of that empire, I can still speak its language fluently, I hope. It's an important point because it will become more pertinent once we start looking at AI and the language models that will drive us forward. And because I grew up in Singapore, there is this one moment, this is the surrender of Singapore, the crown jewel back then of the British Empire, to the Japanese. The Japanese had advanced in World War II, and in this moment, I think it was General Arthur Percival, whose head is faced to the back, is surrendering Singapore to the uh, Japanese general. Subsequently, after this, what happened was a slaughter of the local Chinese population, but also a significant harm in the culture and landscape of Singapore. So this is also my own provenance. This is my heritage and where I come from. But the worst part about all of this is what happened in Hiroshima and Nagasaki when the atom bombs were finally dropped and our history of violence and that cycle of violence was finally made permanent and etched in our provenance as a species. This was the first use of nuclear weapons to destroy and annihilate an entire culture and species, right? And this was necessary, some would argue, to end the war, but it is a mark on our history as a shared species. And I bring this up not to make it too serious, but I want to make a critical point that we have this history of violence and it only gets worse as we become more technologically sophisticated. And while NFTs and the blockchain has provided a powerful trillion dollar asset class that will emerge and all of us will indeed get more financially well off, I want us to think a little bit about the inherent violence that we sometimes have as a species. It was this cynical mindset that led to this very powerful statement. And I think this is a, uh, this is a very powerful acknowledgement of who we are. This is when Dag Hammarskjöld said, the UN was not created to take mankind to heaven, but to save humanity from hell. It's almost as if we have every time a culture gets power, gets some technological capacity, 
what it does it that is that it decides and desires to dominate another culture it seems to be intrinsic as an output of our being as humans so why is this relevant why is this important historical context especially for nfts i think one of the most important postulates that we can perhaps maybe agree or maybe even disagree on is that humans are inherently violent let's take that as a given or maybe that's up for debate but what we know for two part two is that technology unlocks a power law for cultures to dominate the other this is proven across time whether it is in recent history over the past 100 years or thousands of years ago and then consequently certain technologies have a higher moral footprint because of the impact they would have on others so nuclear power i would argue blockchain as well and i would argue artificial intelligence too now this is the only data slide from our friends from ark invest i want to point your attention towards the right side of the slide where we are headed today with the machine learning revolution and this is happening somewhat tangentially to the blockchain space it's not very obvious but it will become so obvious and permanent for us in the next year or two this is happening right under our noses the machine learning revolution the deep learning revolution that's occurring we are about to transition to a stage where code is about to create new code and this accelerating supply of content of data all of this is going to be funneled into really powerful algorithms i agree with uh, gary's comments earlier that facebook sort of brought about the racism but it can also reinforce existing behaviors that we may not necessarily understand fully because it keeps repeating the same content that we see unsurprisingly today most of machine learning and ai work a large portion of the federal budget whether it's in the us or in china is dedicated again to that history and cycle of violence that means by default as a species whatever technology we get we invest it in killing machines right so this is a predator drone of the most sophisticated kind with the most complex computer vision equipment algorithms to pinpoint and spot um, terrorists or people who would do others harm right and so this type of technology does exist significant resources are being placed into technologies like this but it is again the same cycle of violence and the same inherent uh, points that we are driving this towards so introducing and this is this is where things start to get really interesting about a year and a half ago i think a paper was written called language models of few short learners now this is something i mean not many in the nft community are talking about it yet but i believe it will become a significant part of the nft staple and it is at the very basic level and i don't want anyone to be intimidated by these technical logos and i'm going to try to simplify it as much as possible but essentially the opportunity that large language models will present is if you take someone like gary v as a speaker or as his twitter account you feed a little bit of the data of gary's gary v's tweets into a large language model you will be able the large language model will be able to create coherent enough output to sound like gary v that means it's able to understand the way gary v communicates his syntax his grammar the amount of swear words he uses all of these things can be captured by the model the nuance and the subtleties and then be brought back right so with limited data you can create coherent meaningful output so this was a revolution when this paper was published but what happened was the company on the left called open ai was once a non-profit foundation it switched to a for-profit model because it wanted to limit the amount of control this model the amount of access this model would have to the public why what is the implication of having a large large language model like that in public what if somebody wanted to recreate adolf hitler right what if you wanted to feed a model with the book mein kampf and have it regurgitate hate speech these are all possibilities that are going to be soon very prominent in the world so open ai adopted a closed approach they closed down access they limited it to a few people they limited it to select enterprise use cases that would resonate and they did so far a very positive 
Uh, they've, they've done it in a very positive way where they've allowed the language model to grow sustainably over time. On the right is another company that took a completely different tangential approach. Who said, we believe foundationally that these models should be open sourced. And Eleuther, for example, has open sourced a significant amount of work that OpenAI had first released, and they now have released and improved these models over time. Now, the impact of these two technologies, and I want to make sure that all of you remember these names, because they will play a foundational role in the way language models get constructed, the way we will be able to interact with these models. One is a closed approach, the other is an open approach. But both of them run on centralized servers. Like, I need to make that clear. None of these are decentralized. One is an open repository on GitHub, and the other is a closed. Now, what this means for us, when we started this project, we worked with OpenAI, and we said, how can we integrate some of these large language models into NFTs? That's a big ask. Can we actually make an NFT intelligent and interactive? That means, can we take some of the technological breakthroughs that are occurring on the AI side and embed that at the smart contract level so that an NFT can have a personality? So think of your PFP projects, your board apes, your cool cats, uh, your V friends. Can all of them be gifted a personality and be brought to life so that they can interact with you? And this was the first INFT that we brought to life by integrating a language model that was trained on two data sets. The first data set this character was trained on was Alice in Wonderland. The second data set it was trained on was on Satoshi's white paper. So if you ask Alice the NFT, and it's on the Ethereum blockchain, if you ask Alice a question around the Bitcoin white paper, she's going to be able to answer that. And if you ask her a question about Alice in Wonderland, she's also going to be able to answer that from that point. I'm just going to play this video so that all of you understand uh, what an intelligent NFT is. Can we dim the lights? It's not a question of what I'll say. It's a question of whether you are ready to talk. So that's Alice, the first INFT that was successfully auctioned off, but it was also her intelligence. There was an added embedded component at the smart contract level, which I'm just going to show a little bit here. What we've done is we've been able to input a personality prompt, a hash, on chain itself that provides Alice an immutable personality. And that's a little bit technical, but we've written a white paper about it as to how it works. All NFTs from here on can now be upgraded into intelligent interactive assets. And this is where culture becomes really, really important because we can now start looking at cultures that we want to preserve, but also cultures that we want to amplify. So this is our thesis, that we believe NFTs today that are starting from static images, that are evolving into GIFs and videos, and that will soon become, by default, intelligent, interactive experiences. So we launched a collection recently called The Revenants, which is a historical collection bringing back 100 figures from our history. So you have people like Emily Dickinson, you have Friedrich Nietzsche, you have open IP characters that we have brought back to life, and we have also preserved their intelligence. In other words, just like the Library of Alexandria, we now have data sets of their writings, of their open source work that we can now reference. And when you speak with these intelligent NFTs, they will be able to respond to you and interact with you in real time. Thank you. So there is a meme, and, and this is why we launched this uh, platform. It's called Noah's Ark. And on Noah's Ark, your bored apes, your penguins, <laughs> Alice the NFT, um, every other collection that wants to upgrade and provide intelligence and add character and add personality to its NFTs can be brought to life on Noah's Ark. And so Noah's Ark is sort of the perfect metaphor or meme 
to capture it because it was about the survival of our culture and species, right? That's actually the common narrative that we share. So just very simply, this is an example of an INFT of Frida Kahlo, who is a character on Noah's Ark, and all of you can go and interact with her and ask her about her time. Frida is an intelligent NFT. She has a soul, and she has a mind. The soul is an asset that we link on chain to provide Frida that personality prompt which I talked about. So you take any NFT, there is a body, mind, and soul. Once Frida has a soul, she is now able to offer services on the network. This is where the mind comes in. What services can intelligent NFTs offer? What exactly can they do? In our case, besides real-time interactions, we believe that Frida would one day be able to compose poems with you, would one day be able to create art with you, would one day be able to inspire you with her historical context, with questions that only she would have answers to based on her intelligence. And as she evolves across time, Frida would be able to create her own generative art collection. Frida would be able to create her own autonomous smart contracts one day. And so we see this evolution of the NFT providing that perfect property rights layer, not just for culture, not just for assets or PFPs, but we see NFTs providing a perfect property rights layer for intelligence. That means you can now containerize the essence of a person's coherent language structure, put it on chain, and have that INFT talk from that perspective. So I wanted to take this moment to have one of our INFTs, a revenant from our collection, Emily Dickinson, very appropriate to this venue as well, given that although while she was not very politically involved, her poetry and art were, were really foundationally about uh, many, many different and inspiring uh, things in the, in, 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 the, in the poetic world. But for her, a lot of her work was also focused on having you become a sovereign individual. So I want to have the first revenant recite a poem that she has actually written and have her actually share this with all of you today. Hello, my name is Emily Dickinson. Many of you know me as a poet from a century ago. Right now, I'm an intelligent NFT on Noah's Ark in the metaverse. Here's a poem that I wrote a long time back. My life closed twice before its close. It yet remains to see if immortality unveil a third event to me. So huge, so hopeless to conceive as these that twice befell. Parting is all we know of heaven and all we need of hell. Thank you. See you on Noah's Ark. So that's Emily for you. Yeah. So I bring this photo back again because we now actually have an opportunity. The machine learning revolution that's happening tangentially to the NFT revolution is happening on the outskirts. But I want all of you, if you can take away a key message, don't be intimidated by it. Like any technology, it is going to get commoditized. You will soon be able to integrate uh, intelligence into your NFTs. You will soon be able to preserve your culture, your legacy, your language structure, your inheritance, and you would be able to hold an INFT and actually pass it down to your family. Instead of having a Siri or Alexa at home, you would be able to have an INFT of your dad's voice or grandparents' voice in that accent, in that time, in that moment, so that you can interact with it in real time and it can offer services on the network. That INFT can be passed down to your family, to your families, your descendants, even those that are not yet even born. So for me, and for us at Aletheia, one of the most inspiring things is that we must not let something like this happen again to our culture, because we have this inherent and unfortunate tendency as a species to be deeply violent. If we can find a space for culture to actually be preserved and allow it to actually evolve over time, we will not forget our history, but at least we will not be doomed to repeat it. With that, I thank you all for listening. Really appreciate it. <laughs>